In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your own lab using Amazon AWS Web Services. So you want to be at aws.amazon.com. You want to click on Products. You want to select the Amazon EC2. You then want to select Get Started with Amazon EC2. So I'm going to show you how I do it. It's a little different than some people might do it. But first things first, I'm going to be creating a couple of virtual machines, Windows virtual machines, and Unix virtual machines, Linux, basically. So I need to have a VPC, so virtual private connection. So I'm going to select the, click on the default VP, VPC first. I'm going to then select launch VPC wizard. I'm then going to select the VPC with single public subnet. I'm going to leave the IP version 4 CIDR block the same, default here, 10.0.0.16. I'm going to name my VPC. I'm going to name it the Lab VPC. Lab dash VPC. I'm going to then select the availability zone. In my case, it's going to be US West 2A. And then I'm going to select Create VPC. Then I'm going to select uh, OK. So as you can see, I have my VPC here. So if I just select it a little bit, I want to be able to see what is the range of IPs, 10.0.0.0.16. Everything looks fine there. The next thing I need to have is a security group. So I'm going to find on the left here, it's going to say security groups. I'm going to click on security groups. So I'm going to select Create Security Group. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to name the security group. I'm going to call it Lab Security Group. Okay. Description, Lab Security Group. I'm going to associate with the VPC. I'm going to select the VPC. I'm going to click Create. And I'm going to click Close. So let's select our VPC here. So as you can see, I'm just going to check in our inbound rules and our outbound rules. So I'm going to have to edit that. So I'm going to, for inbound rules, I'm going to set everything. So I'm going to click on inbound rules. I'm going to do edit rules. I'm going to add a rule. I'm going to do all traffic, all, and I'm going to put 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 OK, all is good there. Save rule, close. And when I select it again, I should see inbound rules, outbound rules, all traffic, outbound, all traffic. So we're all good. We're all set up now. Next thing to do is select services at the top there, services, followed by EC2. We're going to start by selecting the launch instance. So we click on that, launch instance. Then we're going to scroll down until we see Windows. So I want to choose the Windows, Microsoft Windows Server Base 2019. I'm going to select that. Okay, I'm going to choose the free win general purpose, free tier eligibility. One CPU, one gig RAM. That's all I need for this one. It's going to be a domain controller. I'm going to click Next Configure Instance. Next, we're going to select the network. We're going to choose a network, and we're going to indicate our lab VPC that we put in earlier. Once we do that, it's going to actually automatically put in a subnet for us. We have 251 IP addresses available, so we're going to scroll down. We're going to put in our own IP address in here, 10.0.0.100, or rather 101. And we're going to click Add Storage. Since this is a domain controller, I'm going to leave the 30 gig. No worries for that. I'm going to add a tag here. I'm going to add it as Windows Windows and AD. I'll just put AD there. And then I'm going to select Next Configure Security Group. And since we've already created our security group, we're going to click Select a existing security group. We're going to click that. 
And then we're going to choose the one we chose before, Lab Security Group right there. That's going to allow us to have all traffic, all port ranges, zero. Everything is good to go there. We're going to click on Review and Launch. I'm going to click Launch. And before I forget, it's going to prompt me to create my own care p key pair. This is something I need to keep. I need to create an, I'm going to create an existing one. So I'm going to create a new pair and I'm going to call it lab. And I'm going to download the key pair. I'm going to need this to be able to log into my server. So it's been downloaded. Now I can click on launch instances. And I'm going to click on view instances down at the bottom there. So I just duplicated the process actually. So there's one more thing you have to do before you have you can RDP into the server. So if we scroll over a little bit, notice we don't have an IP address here, right? So I'm going to select the VM itself. I'm going to go to Actions. Then I'm going to go to Networking and Manage IP Addresses. Once there, I'm going to select the Allocate Elastic IP Address. From there, I'm going to choose my network border group, so US West 2. I'm going to click Allocate. It's then going to give me an IP address that I have here. So it's going to give me an IP address. I'm going to click on the actions, followed by associate elastic IP address. So I'm going to choose an instance. I'm going to choose one instance. That's fine. And then I'm going to select allocate. OK. I'm then going to go back to my instance here. I'm going to push the refresh or the arrow there. And now I see that I have an IP address, public IP address. So it's critical you have this because without it, you won't be able to RDP into the server. So I'm going to create a couple more VMs. I'm going to do the same thing, create an IP address on all of them. So now that we've put the IP address on all of the instances, we need to name our instances. We have to really delicate, dedicate the instances so we know which is which. It's very confusing sometimes when you get in your lab and you don't know what instances are what. So I'm going to go, what you do is you click on here, little button there, and you just type what it is. In this case, it's a ID or an Active Directory server. So I'm going to put AD server, and I'm going to do the same with all the other servers. So now that it has been completed, we know our instances here. So next thing you do is to log in to the Active Directory server and actually set up the domain. So we're going to set up the domain controller. So we're going to click on our instance, then we're going to select Actions, followed by Connect. So there's a couple of different things, right? So when you click on the Download Remote Desktop file, you click on that, and that's what you're going to do log in. That's like your RDP, basically, right? So what you do is you're going to know your username. So your username is administrator. And when you push Get Password, then you need to decrypt it. But in order to decrypt it, you need to choose the PEM file from before. So we're going to cho click on Choose File. And then we're going to, of course, choose the .pem file. In our case, it's lab.pem. Then we're going to click on Decrypt Password. Once you do that, you're going to see it's going to represent the password. So you're going to use this password to log into this RDP session right here. So I'm going to click on Connect, OK? And I'm going to click on Start. Then I'm going to go to Server Manu Manager. So I need to be able to do a couple of things. For one, I need to be able to change the host name. So I'll do that first. The second thing I need to be able to do is I need to be able to set the IP address. So from here, I'm going to click on Local Server. Then I'm going to click on the host name, so computer host name. I want to change that, so I'm going to click on it. I'm going to click on Change. I'm going to pull up my host name, what I'd like it to be. Let's copy that. Put it in there. And then I'm going to click, click OK. And then it's going to restart, or it's going to ask me to restart. So why am I doing this? I need to be able to distinguish between, because it's very confusing looking at this. So I want a common name. Typically in the environment, the work environment you're at, you're going to have a, a common name that everybody goes to. So in my case, I'm going to name every one of my servers. I'm going to start with Commvault, followed by a distinguisher, say an airport code of where it is located. In this case, it's DXB. If 
followed by the DC, which is Domain Controller 1. So I've rebooted the server, and now I want to be able to add it to the Domain Controller. So I'm going to click on Manage. I'm going to click on Add Roles and Features, Roles and Features. So my object objective here is to make this a Domain Controller and then add all of the other computers to it in the domain. So I'm going to click on Next. Followed by, OK, role base. I'm going to click on next from there. Select a server from the server pool. OK, that's my IP address. So we're going to click on next. And we're going to select the Active Directory Domain Services. We're going to click on that one. And we're going to click on Add Feature. Followed by next. I'm going to select the .NET Framework 3.5, click Next, followed by Next again. And we're going to click on the Install, which is going to start the process of installing the Active Directory Domain Controller uh, feature. So once that's done and completed, we want to click on the, go at the top here next to Manage on the flag, if you will. And you're going to select the flag, and you're going to select the thing that says promote this server to a domain controller. Once you click that, we want to set up our domain name. So we're going to click on add a new forest. And the name we're going to call our domain name is going to be happydubai.local. That's going to be the, the name of our, our server, or domain controller, excuse me, our domain. So it's happydubai.local. We're going to select next. So we're going to select our, we're going to actually type our password in. And then, so our password is going to be very cryptic and very long. So choose your password good because it should be a good password for you. Then we're going to select next. And then we're going to select next again. And the NetBIOS name is going to be Happy Dubai when it shows up or when it pops up. Perfect. Now we're going to select Next. We're going to leave everything as default and select Next. So you can read all through this. It just means everything is good to go. I'm going to select Next, Review our Options. So it's going to do its prerequisites check and make sure everything is good to go. And um, we're going to come back when it's finished. Fantastic. All prerequisite checks post successfully. So we're going to click on install to install the domain controller. The, uh, the domain controller has been successfully uh, installed. Now it's going to reboot. So the server has been restarted. So instead of using the connect here, so we go click on connect. Instead of using the download remote desktop file. We're going to use the Windows one. So how do we do that? We're going to select the IP version 4 IP address. We're going to just capture that IP and we're going to log in using remote desktop manager or remote desktop. So since I haven't set up a domain user yet, we're going to still log in with the administrator. Okay, so now that the computer has restarted, we're going to set up a user account. So we're going to click on start followed by server manager. followed by Tools, then Active, Directory, Users, and Computers. You want to be able to do two things. One thing I want to be able to do, add a user, and also add the other host names, the computers. The easy one first is to create a user. So I'm going to right-click on Users, go to New, I'm going to say New User. So I'm going to give that user a name. So Happy is the name of the user. Next. I'm going to give the user a very strong password that only I know. And I only know it. OK. And then I'm going to add the user. So I'm going to click on users. I'm going to add that user to the domain admins administrator. So I want to be able to add computers to the domain via this user. So I'm going to click on member of, 
click on add followed by domain check name domain admin that's what I want him to be that's what I want the user to be so I'm gonna click OK click apply click OK so we're good to go there now I just need to add my computer so I'm gonna right click computers new computer I'm gonna put in the names of my all of my computers okay I'm almost done there's a good chance that I'm probably going to have to change the IP address of this server, meaning I may have to add a static IP address to it because it's dynamically added. I'm going to jump onto another server, and if that fails, then I know I probably have to add the, I have to statically assign the IP address of my domain controller. So I'm on my, I've logged into my ComServe server, so Commvault DXB. CS1, and then select Start, followed by Server Manager, and then I'm going to select Local Server. Now I'm going to select Ethernet 3, click in the IP address assigned by DHCP, so I'll right-click on it. I'm going to select Prop Status, Details. Now I want to be able to see if that's the right IP address for my, if I need to add my DNS server, which I think I might. My DNS server is going to be the IP address of my domain controller. So let's do that before I get started. So I'm going to write, I'm going to click on properties. Then I'm going to select the IP version 4 here and click on properties. I'm going to change or I'm going to add my DNS entry for my domain controller, which is 10.0.0.101. That's my IP address. 10.0. Dot zero dot one oh one. That is the IP address of my domain controller. Click OK, close, close. Now we're going to just. I also want to see if I can ping the domain controller. So let's head over to our domain controller real quick. I want to show you what it looks like. So this is the domain controller. And this is the ComServe server. So I'm going to click on Properties of the Domain Controller. I'm going to select IP version 4 Properties. And notice what you see here. You see the loopback address of this Domain Controller. So that's 10.0.0.100. How do we know that? Cancel. Cancel. We click on Details. The IP address, that 127.0.0.1, that's the same. It's like saying, hey, I'm... I'm a 10.0.0.101 IP. It's not in there, but that's what it is. So we know we're good there. So I, I've verified that I know the IP address, the DNS name, what it should be of the main controller. Now I'm going to see if I can ping that server. So I'm going to click on, I'm going to say ping 10.0.0.101. And if I can ping it, I'm good. So now I should be able to set up, uh, add this computer to the domain controller. I'm back here in the Commvault server. I'm at local server under my server manager. I'm going to click on work group. I'm going to select work group. And I'm going to change, click on change. And I'm going to select domain. I'm going to put my domain name in here, which is going to be happy Dubai dot local. It's going to ask me for the username, which is happy and my encrypted password that I've created that only I know. Click OK. And success. So we've welcome to the Happy Dubai local domain. So it's going to restart. When I click close, it's going to reboot. And we're going to come back. I'm going to do this to all the other servers. And, and now we're set up. We're ready to go with our lab. So all of our servers can now be added to the domain.